I still think the Canada story was excellent. Oh, the Canada story was brilliant. A hundred percent for real. That's what, that's really what we're trying to figure out is how many people in today's age have gone to another country illegally with no passport. And then came back in with illegal, with illegal goods. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, so talk to us, right. Just from point blank, your biggest challenge professionally in your business is this live in 30 seconds what is the biggest <clears throat> issue this will be um well no introductions or anything we're just diving right no in. We'll, we'll get back to that okay. stuff but okay. i just want to know because it's super relatable and we're in it with you right now so we can see this that's true so i just want to just kick that what is the biggest thing that's happening to you uh goodness it's um motivating people that's it Oh, very diplomatic approach. Yeah. So just let's just back up for a second. Ryan Hensley, of course, over there, you got the busy bee. And, uh, and Ryan, you are one of the owners or a co-founder or creator of Secure, Correct. Feel Secure. Yes, sir. Um, one, of our, one of our clients, mm -hmm. proudly, you guys have an incredible product which is going to market and has gone to market and has been well received and is growing. Mm -hmm. um, but as any relatively new company that is working and hitting those next plateaus or the next levels, mm -hmm. there are growing pains. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we're going through a, a growing pain. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a pulled groin right now. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, in you, a marathon. Yeah. Yeah. In a marathon you want to run, but right now you're kind of, kind of injured a little bit, but yeah, it's definitely, um, you know, I think it's good, though, because <clears throat> in my opinion, since we are so young, hitting something like this and having to adapt and adjust right here in the beginning is much easier than a year from now, mm -hmm. in my opinion, right? <clears throat> so I think I'm kind of thankful for that, and I also feel like it's a very good thing, and the direction that we're taking it is going to be positive and have really good outcome. Mm -hmm. And let's, <clears throat> let's step, because I know this isn't the first thing, let's take an all the way step back mm -hmm. before secure, before everything. How did, how do you, Ryan Hensley, how, how does your journey look like? How did you get to where, where you are right now? Well, Brandon was back in fifth grade <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> So, I really think he means that. So I know. I feel like it. Yeah, probably. It was yeah. it was during recess in fifth grade. Uh, it was a pretty traumatic event in my life. No. So <clears throat> prior to this, prior to Secure, um, I was in a completely different field. So I was a custom home builder. So dad started building custom homes in 85. So I was four. So I grew up in it. And then at the same time, I then grew up in network marketing as well, right? Direct sales, because mom and dad were in, in a competitor. You know, I won't name names or okay. anything, but they were in a competitor. So I grew up in that environment. So <clears throat> fast forward a little bit, housing market crashes in the 80s. Dad goes into computers. 2003, 2002, he's having a house built. And he's like, I could do this in my sleep. Like, this builder's an idiot, basically. So he started building again in 2003. And then I joined him in 2006 and had just built custom, <clears throat> custom homes for the last, you know, however many years, and then just decided to go completely left field and change, change everything and, and um, went into business with my best friend, and now we have a network marketing company. So let's just, <clears throat> that's ballsy enough to take a left field change. <laughs> also taking a left field change with your best friend. Yeah. How do you come about yourself to create that situation? How do you develop? Because a lot of the a lot of those who are listening now mm -hmm. are local family owned business owners. It's people who are professionals who are maybe getting into their passion, mm -hmm. are developing their own thing. This is really a lot of just identifying what some of the successes, failures, and landmines you've stepped on. And this is this is a really interesting thing because I think you've successfully navigated, from what I can tell, this development of fostering a relationship with your best friend and then also deciding to get into business together with secure. Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people 
uh, including myself and including him, we've talked about that, like the dynamic of being in business with your best friend because you're mixing, you're now mixing financial things, right? And that always can cause problems, especially, you know, that's one of the reasons why I stopped building homes when this opportunity presented itself because the relationship with dad wasn't where we wanted it to be, right? Him and I, dad and I. And so getting out of that helped that relationship, which is amazing. So then taking what I learned from 14 years of working with my dad, I translate those things that I learned and all the landmines and all the different things I had to go through with dad and to not repeat that by going into business with the best friend. Mm-hmm. Right? So you had to be down a road that you didn't have to, you know, if, you, if you've seen something coming, an obstacle, whatever, you can kind of foresee it based on your relationship and your previous experience with your father. Correct. Yep. Well, and you're, you're not going to break up from, from your dad, no. right? Family, you don't go anywhere. So if you look at that, you, you had that ability to step on landmines knowing you're not going anywhere. Yeah, but there's a difference between, I mean, blood stays blood, but that doesn't mean the relationship's there. Oh, right. Right. So, so did you see yourself in a situation where you and Pops were having falling outs or just weren't in the right area? And, and what did you do to mitigate that? So it, it got to the point where there was just enough conflict during the day where I didn't want to hang out with him in the evenings or the weekends. Because I'm like, dude, I see you all the time. Like, and we were just arguing 20 minutes ago. So how do you switch hats real quick? Mm-hmm. Right? That's really hard to do. So just basically eliminate the problem right see an opportunity walk through the other door leave this one behind and that's kind of what i did but my business partner now my best friend now we were wanting to do something together for years we just couldn't figure out what that was because the field he was in oil and gas and i'm over here building like we just couldn't find something to do right but he had this wonderful product that he'd been working on for years and years and years and trying to figure out how to get it to market and we just said, hey, let's do this. So we did it. And this, this product itself, and it's really interesting. It's, <clears throat> and I mean interesting because it's one of those things that is so simple and so basic and rudimentary mm-hmm. that it's almost, I don't know if you've had an experience where you just go, how did I not think about that? And this product is as simple as it can get. If you want to talk just a little bit about it, and Biz, I, I'm curious to hear what your what your takeaways from an anecdotal perspective is of it, because I know we've all had real success using the product itself. I'm mad I didn't think of it, because <laughs> it wasn't a why didn't I think of that. It's like, damn, who thought of this? Right, exactly. <laughs> and I, it's funny when you say, hey, Biz, you know, tell an anecdotal, anecdotal story about it. I asked Biz to do that, what was it, like a week ago? Yep. I was like, hey, Biz, give, me a, give me a 30-second testimonial. Well, you can't do it because once you've been on the product, it, you just start talking about it, and it was, you talked for like two and a half minutes. So, yeah, yeah, and it was it was just one. It was still one thought, but it was everything that what it was. And the person we were talking to was, I think, thoroughly satisfied. Oh, yeah, and said like, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. But today is your day to do your elevator pitch. Oh, my elevator pitch. <clears throat> so as we sit here at wonderful ICC in Frisco, Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. Nice. <laughs> Um, and we're sitting here smoking cigars, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll pull the Elliot routine, right? So I'm a man who likes fine cigars, fine whiskey, and I kind of like being around y'all. Mm-hmm. Fair I enough. Mean, I mean, good people. Great, fair, great fair people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fine people. Yeah. Yeah. Biz. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. In, indubitably. So all those things that we do, the, the cigars or the whiskey or the wine or the food and the processed food because we all move too fast through life because no American knows how to slow down. And so move too fast. Oh, I, I forgot to eat lunch like you do all the time. And then you go get something fast food, right? And it's got processed stuff in it. All those things are causing inflammation within your body because your body is creating acid that it doesn't need. And that essentially works out to be what? Like a roadblock in, yeah, your, in your system? Basically, a roadblock, a construction zone. It, your body does a perfect job of healing itself, but you're putting roadblocks in the way for your body to do what it does. So it has to work a little bit harder, right? Or sometimes a lot harder, depending on your, your level of problems that you might have. So the product itself, um, unlike other products on the, on the market that can help your body dilute the acid that causes inflammation in the body, our product removes the acid. 
and eliminates it completely. And what I think is the coolest thing is it not only eliminates it, but it eliminates it by converting it. Correct. So it turns it into water, turns itself into water. So you now have two extra water molecules in your body that you didn't have and you didn't have to drink any water. It does it all. So you're ultra hydrating from the inside without doing anything extra. And the way that I've seen this anecdotally is I've noticed what you what you are telling me is just in, in just hearing and doing all the research of it is you don't understand how much of the manifestation of red spots and stuff on your skin is because there's something wrong inside your body. I didn't realize that that's what I thought it was you know, chemicals or dirty pores or something like that. But when you start when you take it, you realize and the things clear up, you mm-hmm. go. Uh, there was something wrong there. Correct. It wasn't just a whatever, a fill in the blank of what I thought it was. Correct. That's a really interesting thing. And it's, it's a product that is, it's super cool. It's amazing. Yeah. And, it, that, and that's just, the, that's just a, the, the liquid concentrate additive for internal. And then we decided, hey, we need to make it external. The largest organ in your body that also has acid and inflammation is skin. Right? So we turned it into a gel. And that works on, I mean, you name it. It's amazing in regards to the different ailments that your skin can have from internal issues, right? So it's, it's, a, it's, it's revolutionary. Now, you take it. Now, Biz, you've been using it. You've used it a number of times. What is, what's your takeaway from it? And I know this is just an, a, basically an infomercial for this at this point, but, <laughs> but there are other really interesting elements that, that break inside of it. But just for someone who doesn't know, who's it for? What, what's your use? My use is twofold. Internally for me, I use the concentrate. Uh, I've noticed because this guy has been torturing me in the gym for the last 90, almost four months now. I've heard. And uh, it's literally recovery is super simple. It doesn't, I mean, it hurts, but you're not, you know, the, 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 the burn, the, the discomfort, all that's nowhere near what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I sleep really well at night. Mm-hmm. Um, even though you take it first thing in the morning, whatever reason i sleep really well enjoyable dreams that's a whole nother subject mm-hmm. um it, my, <laughs> yeah. yeah put that on the side let's yeah. go back to that <laughs> yeah, we'll table that one <clears throat> yeah. my son uh he gets these little breakout spots all the time and as soon as he hits it especially it gets kind of bad around here on his face a little patch he's like daddy where's my jail i said yep summer so nightstand and he takes it and literally that'll be eight in the morning when he starts his zoom call by that afternoon Cleared up. Cleared up. After I shave, I put it on, you know, just to make sure. I don't get hair bumps and bumps and all that, Mm -hmm. but, you know, you're supposed to put something astringent or something on your skin after you shave, and my skin's not on fire, stays smooth, and I have nothing but good things to say about the the product inside and out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So aside from on the product side of things, the business structure side of things, when you're going to launch a a business, especially a a consumable, Mm -hmm you have different directions to go for you. It is a more hybrid multi-level marketing structure. Mm -hmm. How do you decide to take, especially understanding that the world, the way the world views multi-level marketing as a whole, Mm -hmm. knowing the direction of how you can create a hybrid model of that, how do you decide to go instead of just hitting shelves and going after it, becoming more of that marketing, the MLM side of things. So because So when he was going through the process with his product on how to bring it to market, that everybody wanted it. All all the big box stores wanted it, right? Cost tons of money to fill their shelves for whatever agreement you have with them. You got to put so much inventory in stock, things of that nature, right? And then someone walks by and sees it on a shelf. They pick the bottle up and they read it. Oh, okay, cool. They set it back down. And then they go finish their shopping list, right? That was the reason, right? Right there. So Because it requires the education. It requires testimonial and education. I was explaining it to my 87-year-old grandfather before, before we really got into the nuts and bolts of creating the network marketing company. It was way back in the very beginning when we had decided to go network marketing, right? And I'm sitting there explaining it to my grandfather, and he, his exact words were, wow, this is, a, this is a product that needs to be taught. And that right there was confirmation. Mm-hmm. That was that was it right there. As with everything that changes your life's your your lifestyle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cigars are the same thing. You can 
you can try to do the same thing mm -hmm. because there are a lot of alkaline waters. Mm -hmm. And that's when you talked about there are a lot of things that dilute the problem. Very f One that eliminates the problem. Right. And, 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 and there's nothing against alkaline water. I tell everybody to drink a pH balanced water because you're not introducing new acid into your body. Right. At least it's less acid because mm -hmm. the pH is higher. So still drink your alkaline waters. That's great. But just add my product to it and it supercharges it and does something completely different than what just your basic over-the-counter alkaline water does. Mm. So into the business, mm -hmm. you, you're a lean team. Mm -hmm. You will be unguarded here. Okay. You have a national sales director. Yep. And you have a lot of things on the horizon. You have somebody that let, let's, you have somebody that is very important to the company. And this is where I think many people who are sitting watching this can, can relate is they bring in somebody, they hire somebody. Mm -hmm. It's maybe their first hire. Mm -hmm. And we saw this at Go Local. We've, se we, you know, we've seen this because we're not sure how to scale. Do you scale the business or do you scale the sales or how do you sell? How do you scale everything? Okay. And you put a lot of responsibility on somebody who comes in and then you say, okay, this is yours. I need you to take ownership of it. And... That's a, that's a concept that's lost with many people is just saying, I need you to own this. I need you to run with it. Now let's, we'll, we'll move forward to that person doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. The plane is taken off. You're flying. Mm -hmm. What is your method and what is your process of building the plane while it's in the air? So... My thought process in the very beginning was <clears throat> build the entire plane, completely fuel the plane, get the runway laid out, get the flight plan laid out, then take off. So if because of the scaling factor of trying to grow the company, grow the sales, start implementing things while you grow, to me is not always the smartest way to do it because you're constantly trying to play catch up. So our plan was put all the pieces into, in place for success and then go, mm -hmm. right? Rather than, than go, okay, I think we're ready. Okay, let's just launch real quick so we can get out there into the market and start making sales. And then go, oh crap, we don't have this. We need to implement this. Which then detracts you from running the company because you're now, you're now having to take two steps back, think about how to implement this new thing rather than just continuing on your flight path, right? And climbing and climbing and climbing. You get to 10,000 feet and you go, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta do something. And you hold at 10 mm -hmm. for a little bit. Then you can get up to 15. And then at 20, you're like, oh wait, we need this now. So as of right now, you hire that individual, you put, you put faith into him or her, and you say, go do what you gotta do, right? And it may not work out, but, and if it doesn't work out, you don't go, oh crap, and you drop 15,000 feet, you stay at 35, you keep flying, and you realize that it's, it's, a, it's a good change, mm -hmm. right? Because then you can refocus and go, okay, what we did here for X number of time didn't work. So let's learn from that, understand, similar to what Elliot said, you, you, you're happy about your failure because you learn from it, so you don't do it again in the direction that you take the company or whatever decision you have to make, you have a much better mindset in saying, this is the, a better direction because we already tried this one, didn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Biz, I, <clears throat> and I know you've, you've worn many hats at many places and a lot of things had your name on the, on the, uh, the marquee. On the marquee, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm curious what you've seen with that. What are, what are some of the successes or, or failures that, that, that you've seen of maybe bringing in somebody that didn't pan out, but holy shit, it's time to go. Um, the hardest thing I struggle with is um, <clears throat> sorry, delegation because you always feel like nobody can do it better than you can or if you want it done a certain way. So then when you do entrust somebody, you show them how to do it and you just leave it to them to do the follow up. Mm -hmm. It's hard at first. It's, it's also, the thing about it is, though, but if somebody does put on a parachute and bail out at 30,000 feet, you can get right into the pilot seat until the next pilot comes along, 
and you just fly the plane until they get there. But that's, you know, we know that's not your, your, your permanent position. You're in the back trying to find new runways to build. Mm-hmm. But as long as you have enough people to me, my, my, my thing has always been if somebody's quit on me or something's happened like that, I just go back and I fly the plane, you know, while I'm looking for the next. But see, the thing is, too, when you build a buzz, then you have a whole bunch of people in line waiting to fly your plane. You know, it's just now, and, and sometimes somebody can be a, a great representative. They can be a great actor, and, and you think they're one thing, and they turn in they're not what you want it to be. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to vet everybody. Mm-hmm. But still, as long as your brand builds a buzz that people are attracted to, you won't have to fly that plane for that long. Mm-hmm. I've and never had problems with replacements or anything like that. Especially if <clears throat> what you have is genuine, and the approach is genuine, because when what, what you're probably not able to see is in this situation just on the front end you you get to see it but on the back end currently right now the rest of our team is meeting about how to take secure to the next level Mm -hmm. and how to bridge that gap so the beauty of that is surrounding yourself with a good team where if one person may falter Mm. then others can step up into that place and say all right let's go let's rock and roll and that goes back to my point of building the entire plane before you take off so Making a, making a decision to partner with Go Local was one of the best decisions because I knew that that part of the plane was built, ready to go, ready to do its thing, right? I didn't have to think about it again. So that's the, that's the easy part, partnering, partnering with the right people. But then again, I also look at the, the guy who jumps out at 30,000 feet and we can call it a failure, we can call it not a failure, we can call it a success because we learn from it. Right, that's kind of the way I view it. I didn't fail; mm-hmm. I learned. Right? Mm-hmm. Did he did he work out? No, he didn't work out. It is what it is. I mean, uh, Ten years from now, or two years from now, or three years from now, I'm going to have other employees that don't work out. It's not going to be the first one. No, yep. and it just is what it is. Um, but yeah, just just recognizing that it's not a failure; it's a success, even though it failed. But like you said, the initial build, it's better to lose a couple of rivets in the air than now a whole yeah. wing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, so you're, you're still rocking and, and, and still rolling. Mm-hmm. And, um, but from a perspective of, and one thing I always like to do with these is like p- give people insight if they were thinking about or in your same situation. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of why we come up with the scenarios and, and what we talk about, because you always think you're the only one going through something right now. You're 20, not. 20,000 of those people are like, oh, man, mm-hmm. what do I do? I had five people just grab parachutes and head down the hallway. What do we do? You know, mm-hmm. so, um, but I still think that if, if, you, if the plane is built, and I think you guys did a really good job of it when we first initially came on and seen what it was and we all helped build the plane, mm-hmm. um, you're cruising. You, you are cruising. Now, can we elevate? Yeah. And that's one thing we're excited to see if we can actually push the throttle forward a little bit within this time as we're replacing. And just you, have, you don't have one co-pilot. You got like five. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, making it. You know, we may throw a couple extra engines onto this thing, you mm-hmm. know, but... How do we elevate it so that way, like you said, you just, it's kind of, you know, it's a steady climb. It is. Because <clears throat> I've learned one thing. Um, a company I ran before I came here, we hit, we did that, that straight. You ever see a plane take straight off oh, vertically? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did that. And it was incredible. And when we hit the ceiling, I mean, it crashed. Right. Because those growing pains, sometimes when you grow so fast, you can't handle the swell. Mm-hmm. And what do you do? Everybody put on parachutes. Yeah, and it implodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, real quick. Mm-hmm. Real quick. So I think at this pace and that what it is, if you just do it steady, naturally, and learn from your mistakes and, and don't be unrealistic, they're mm-hmm. going to come. Mm-hmm. I, I would say to anybody that's, whether they're starting a business, thinking about starting a business, started it, thinking about hiring people, having, <clears throat> having people jump out with parachutes, Especially the part about thinking about starting a business, like you asked me beginning, like how did you decide to go from here and just take a hard left and go over here? It's kind of like the conversation you and I had at this table. Mm-hmm. Just freaking do it. Like we've had this conversation. What did you tell me? Do you remember what the exact words you told me? What did you say? <coughs> it was just a sentence. I know what did. It- and see, so what we talked about, I've already talked to Brandon about deeply, and we talked about it. He said, "Shut up." And do something. Yeah. You can like, talk. You can literally. talk. That's right. Because we, that's right. We were on my back patio. Yep. Yep. And I said, you can talk and talk and talk all freaking day long about what you think you want to do or what you think you could do, or you can just stop talking and freaking do it. And, and that's, then I and shut I, up. And you did. Which is hard for me. And, and I, I shut up. And now you're doing it. 
<laughs> yeah, things are rolling and, and, and coming along, and it, it doesn't af- it's not affecting. Thank God, what I do, you know, everything is balanced. So that, that, let me ask both of y'all. Everybody goes along. Now, if anybody else is a YouTube junkie like me and, and just obsessed with reading every entrepreneurial book under the sun, and then I say you should have seven streams of income and blah 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 mm-hmm. blah blah blah. A- average millionaire has seven streams. Yep. Okay, so we're all on our way, mm-hmm. hopefully to that. Um, sure. <laughs> but if you think about it. Is how do you balance that? Because you got one plane. Do you do it one plane at a time? Are you building two simultaneously? Do you wait till one's done? How do you got? You know, because we're all kind of spinning plates, as Brandon says. We're all kind of spinning. I'm trying to get one spinning, you know, Mm -hmm. and maintain the one I got. And then I got kids. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. Um, (laughs) But what is your take on multiple streams, or does it derail you from the one you have? Do you? finish the one you have before you start a second one opportunity may present itself for both i mean how do you guys handle that you want to start yoda boy ha <laughs> it's um i'm struggling enough as it is with two planes in the air and a family um so to think that i would add five more That's to crazy. the to the equation um it's not in my personal style, it wouldn't be responsible for me to move on to the next because I have to dedicate. I'm, I'm in this deal, and, and this is actually selfishly part of this is I just, I'm so interested in identifying, defining, and becoming great, just truly great. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the people who are truly great, they're great at a thing. If you look at if you look at any of the overall greats in the world, the Michael Jordans, you, you look at, that's what they do. He's pretty good at golf. He's good at golf. And cigars. Yeah, but. You can play a mean game of poker too. Well, oh, well, maybe those are all, yeah. those are all, yeah. <laughs> and those are revenue streams. Yes, but yeah, honestly, balance is, is a very, very difficult thing. It is. Uh, so do you think seven is a BS number? Because you can really be a millionaire off two, off of one, essentially, but. Do you need that many? I mean, I think that's just a number that maybe Dale Carnegie or somebody may have averaged out. Or here's my opinion on it. <clears throat> I think you. I think you're you're right on. You're right on because even with one plate, you can struggle, mm-hmm. right? So I think what you have to do is you gotta you gotta know where your faults are. You gotta un, you gotta recognize your faults, and then you gotta put the pieces in place for that one plate to spin on its own without you 100% managing it. Mm-hmm. Now, you're still there. You're still doing it, right? You're still, you still know the plate's there, and you're still helping it spin, but you're not spinning it yourself. And then you can take that brain power, and you can move it over here and go, okay, I'm going to start spinning this plate. Because if you, in, in my opinion, if you sit there and you spin so many plates and you divide your, your brain power up, you're not, you're not giving due justice to any of the plates. And to that right. point... You, that first plate or the first couple plates Mm -hmm. have to be so strong that it has to withstand and has to go to the next. So if you look at, I'm sure the first two or the first one Mm -hmm. is so substantially harder than five, six, seven, because you already understand the system. You have importantly capital to get the right people from the beginning where you don't have to, at the beginning you have to scale, but you can only scale with this person because you can't quite... You're in that, you're in it, where if that thing can stand alone and have additional capital that you can bet with house money, now you can start. To me, it makes sense. Let's let's take two two days ago, I think it was two days ago, Bezos stepped down as CEO. Yep. Okay. That his his empire he built was so sturdy, he's like, okay, it's time. So he's going to step back because he wants to start spinning all these other plates. Which, look, uh, with Microsoft, he did the same thing. You know, oh my God, you're like, man, I got other stuff to do. Mm-hmm. This is cool. This is cool. Mm-hmm. It's good. Now, <clears throat> you, can, you can do that from, I mean, none of us are billionaires, unfortunately. Not yet. Getting there. Getting there. Working on it. Working, yeah. on, working on it. I think you can do that. You, your plate doesn't have to be as big as Amazon for you to step away from it and start spinning another one. It just has to be where you're comfortable. That's the, and that's putting trust in the right people. So it's, it's getting the right people in place, people that you trust, people that are going to keep spinning the plate in the right direction that you want it to spin, and then you can go, okay, I'm good. 
So let me go to the other side of it. Tyler Perry said, a rose, if, if you wanted the world's prettiest flower, that one rose, mm-hmm. you have to take that one rose and you have to care for it, you have to cultivate it, you have to nurture it, you have to water it, you have to give it all its love so that one rose can grow into that big prize rose that you want. So look at his, his situation. All he wanted to do was write and direct. Mm-hmm. And he did it. Slept in his car, homeless, whatever. So he went from being homeless in a car to that one play that he kept trying year after year after year, and he focused on that one character, Medea. Medea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now this man has a multi-billion dollar studio in Georgia. You know, so he kept the one spl- now, but his plate it's different because he has a gazillion plates, but they're all in the same warehouse. Mm-hmm. So instead of one play, he has like nineteen TV shows on TV at the same time, and that's and that's his wheelhouse, right? Exactly. So. I guess there's other ways to look at it that you can have different streams if you look at here, you know, where you may have a lounge, Mm -hmm. you have e-commerce, you have delivery, you have events. Those are all several plates spinning inside of one thing, and they all still generate different parts of the income. Mm -hmm. When you you talked about wheelhouse, Ryan, and your wheelhouse for essentially your your entire life has been in building custom homes. Mm -hmm. And then you entered into another one. Mm Mm-hmm. How do you how do you feel that's fitting? How do you do you enjoy it? Is it something that um, you would do different, or how for those who are looking to get into something else? How would you recommend them looking to get into a different wheelhouse? And does it need to be perfect, or you just need to go? So <clears throat> when we first talked, and we talked about over here building homes and t- taking a ninety degree turn and going completely different direction, <clears throat> I wasn't probably should have worded that differently. So when you say wheelhouse was building homes and now I'm doing this, I don't view it that way. My wheelhouse is building. So it's, it's the process. It's putting the right pieces in place. It's, it's starting with the foundation. It's starting then the framing and then the, the plumbing and the electrical and sheetrock, right? So secure is the same thing. It's, it's still my wheelhouse. It's just got a different package, right? So my wheelhouse is, the, is construction, constructing the business, operating the business, molding and shaping it to the final product, just like building a home. And when, when, with building a home, you're dealing with the homeowners and the contractors and a thousand different people during the process. With Secure, you're dealing with, let's call it a thousand different subcontractors. And the homeowners are the people that you work with, right? Mm-hmm. So... And then you got the banks and you got the appraisers and then you got the title companies and all those different entities that are within that. And then the subcontractors would be like the brand, my brand reps of secure out there in the world. So I get that. I've learned that working with you guys, all the different things that you had to go through for approvals and making sure you're in, 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 in line and all that stuff like it's no different than if an inspector would come to a house and making sure you're in code and all that. Yeah, and, and It's the same thing on the side, what you had to do with security. Yeah, the software side, the, the, the marketing side would go local, the, ta- mm. the sales tech side, the software side, the, the phone systems, the, you know, all these different pieces to the puzzle that make the house. Did you, do, did you make blueprints? Did the custom homes? Did you actually do the blueprints themselves, or did I? Mm-hmm. No, that was the that was another piece of the puzzle. That right? was the architect, so that's part. the architect part. Okay, so but you are the uh, the big picture. This is how I see it, and then you can delegate for the home or the business to mm-hmm. be constructed. Mm-hmm. Sounds not like somebody I know. Yep. So my question <laughs> to you is: How do you identify? whether the subcontractor that you're working with, the employee you're working with fits the mold. Mm -hmm. Do you work with, this is what I'm looking for perfectly and then go find that person. Do you take what the opportunities are, take which is the best option from that and then coach into it. What's your approach when it comes to getting the right people? In a perfect world, we would want to be able to say, I'm going to go here. Here's the, here's that little bubble that I want that perfect, that person to fit in. Okay, well, that's never going to happen. It's just not. Mm -hmm. So I would take the approach of Bill Belichick. Get a bunch of convicts and then (laughs) make him into football players. (laughs) Or or, or just cheat like crazy. Yeah, 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 both of those. Both of those. No, he took, took, let's call it a scrub from Team A, Mm -hmm. and he noticed the the qualities, and he, he made the best out of the qualities of that person. 
right? So let's say, let's say he brings over a running back or whatever, and that running back, he's not good at lateral cuts. He's a downhill runner, and he blasts through the line. Well, he's going to see that, and he's going to cultivate that and make him even better at doing that one thing that he does. Rather than trying to find the perfect running back that can do everything, he's going to put together a team where everybody's strengths can be utilized to the best of their ability. The, so, someone once told me, always focus on making your strengths stronger, mm-hmm. not your weaknesses better. Because I don't want somebody with a bunch of mediocre weaknesses and mediocre strengths. Mm-hmm. I want somebody that's the best at whatever their strength is. Mm-hmm. And that's, it, it goes to exactly what you're saying. Find that strength, mm-hmm. understand the, the person, the people. Mm-hmm. And Elliot spoke about this is just give enough, uh, give a shit about the people that are working for you. So that way you can understand what they want, what they're, where they're going to, and then just help them go to where they're going to. And the, my mentor, which is my dad, his mentor told him this, and I think I've told both of y'all this actually. And that this goes to anybody listening who's wanting to hire people. No one will ever get motivated past their lot in life. Expand on that. So if, if you hire somebody <clears throat> and you see that they're really good at X, Y, Z, right? And they're very comfortable at this dollar amount salary, okay? But you also see that they may have potential to do this. And you try to pour into them and motivate them and help them grow and help them expand. They're never, they're never going to go past their lot in life. You're not going to take a janitor who doesn't want to be a CEO and get them to the CEO point. <clears throat> so you got to recognize that within the employee. So you're not sitting there dumping all your extra energy into them when there's no good outcome. Dude, never watch trading places. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that uh, it's a good point. And it because it becomes such a sticky, frustrating mm-hmm. energy and emotion zapping process to go, why won't you do this? Correct. But from leadership, you have to recognize and realize this is their talents, this is their limits. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they're not the type of person to grow past their limits, but if somebody does this job, just this task really, really well, and it's a task that you need, um, then, then, so then does that go into then you have to hire several people? Or are you still going to always search for that all-in-one person? I think you got to define what the all-in-one person needs to do. Is it something where in the beginning, like my company, it being so small, my business partner and I have to make decisions on who we're going to hire and, not, and, and recognizing their strengths and not putting too much on their plate at one time or, or not expecting them to handle all those plates at one time. Just like we talked about as business owners, having different plates. Well, an employee can only have so many plates, right? So I think it comes down to what position you're hiring for and then what you need that person to do. Expectations. Expectations, <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, I think that's... It's, it's super valuable that so many people out there are, they're going from their dead end job to taking a jump, just seeing early success because they're doing what they love to do, mm-hmm. but then not really having any idea of how to build and how you know, they're going to bring someone in because they, they knew X, Y, Z, whatever her name was, because she did a good job with me at this whatever mm-hmm. and they bring it on but they, they're not actually being very pragmatic and very realistic with the approach mm-hmm. and not being a true leader they're being a friend mm-hmm. and bringing someone in mm-hmm. and i just got lucky to be honest because gabe and i were friends before mm-hmm. and we just met each other before he started coming in but I, I i had i had to basically approach it in this really really weird situation of is this my friend right now? Is this an employee? Is this a partner? Is this a, what is it? And I think many people can relate to that. It's, you don't want to push your friend in the same way you would push an employee, correct? which requires you to just, in my approach, when I was in that position, because we weren't making enough that I could make him and call him an employee and put him on a contract and treat him like an employee. So I had to treat him like a, a, a teammate. And I'm glad we did because that just required me to shut up go to work, lead by example, and expect more of myself than I expect anyone else. Mm-hmm. And that, that really wore off. And I think that's something that we're seeing from 
I think Biz sees that often from Gabe is, I mean, it, it was, he was a bartender in Kansas and now he's, he expects the world of everyone that we, that we work with. And, and there's growing pains because that is hard when you work with friends and brothers and things like that. And then if something falls through the crack or somebody has to accept responsibility, if there's a misunderstanding or a disagree, no, a disagreement, that is one of the hardest things for me to get past with anybody. And like, even when I ran a radio station, I hired all my friends, mm -hmm. not because they were friends though. They actually had the skills to do what I needed to get done. But when I had to fire one that, I mean, like literally we shed tears mm -hmm. and I kind of put it off on my, my general manager, <clears throat> you know, I had, I needed a scapegoat, but like, that was the hardest thing because now you got to see this person after hours, after mm -hmm. work hours. Hey man, what's up? How you doing? I'm cool. My family lights is off. My car got repo because you, but that's all right. Now, you know, that was, that was your fault. You just get into it. But just, I think, but maturity comes with it too. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking to, to this part of the conversation goes back to the beginning. Like you said, you work with your dad. I mean, I, I know you hang out with your business partner when you're not doing business. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you turn Or like when I'm hanging out, We'll, we'll do our patio sessions when we sit down, kind of like at your house. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing. And first thing Brian said, I'm not going to talk about business. And I always, we always end up talking about business because sometimes you don't get time some, to talk about the state of affairs when you're at it. Yeah, and I think, I think in regards to my, my best friend, when, when it's after hours, yes, business always comes up because... Just, that's life right that's now. That's what it is. That's, that's what, what you is. do. But the but you're exactly right. The conversations that you have after hours aren't the same conversations that you have during business hours. Correct. It is a. It's way more deeper, philosophical, and, and growth, directional, growth oriented, directional. Yes. Expansion. Bounce ideas off. Hey, this is what I've been thinking about. Because during work hours, which as business owners, there's no there's no there's thing no off. As, there's no off. There's no such thing as hours. So. But during, during business hours, you're discussing, okay, this is the current problem. How do we solve it? This is the current project we're working on. How do we, you know, how do we hit our deadline? How do we not go over budget? You know, it's, you know, those type of conversations, not the, not the after hours conversations. Yep. I don't think there's a problem talking shop after, after hours. I think in what I appreciate and what I would recommend to anyone who's in that position where you're working with a friend, especially a dear friend and someone who's very close mm -hmm. is when biz and i biz and i will talk back and forth and more of the operational talk of what you're speaking about of more project based but when biz says we need a little pat patio session mm -hmm. that is such a cool thing of like i know going in we're gonna smoke a cigar we're gonna have a cup of drinks <clears throat> and we're gonna be very real very transparent very next level mm -hmm. and we don't mm -hmm. talk about what happens on the patio outside of that right. it is that is locked into that space of time mm -hmm. we lock it in <clears throat> and then we just get out disconnect i get a good view of of where his heart and soul is and vice That's versa, versa. Mm -hmm. and and then we just go to work until some of us needs that that connection mm -hmm. that you really can't get in a corporate world so i would say to people out there that if you do consider going into business with a best friend or a friend or even a family member that the balance of it all is important if you both recognize it going in. And I'm not saying you, you disconnect because no matter what, if you're going to be, you know, what's my man's name from Mortimer and what's the name from Trading Places, even in, in uh, uh, Coming to America, they were bums together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, mm -hmm. they got it all together and they lost it all together, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it comes with maturity, you know, being that I'm a lot older than you guys, but it doesn't matter because, like I say, older. a lot older. <laughs> <laughs> But we can go to the gym and bench press right now. No, I'm just joking. Um, but age doesn't matter. It's experience because I take a lot from you guys and I've done some things. But now I'm entering into a world where um, the bar has been raised. Just relocating to Dallas from where we're from in Omaha. It's, it's different. I'm no diss against home. Home is home. But the, the biggest achievement I had in my, in my life was creating, running, and having a successful radio station that's then there. Then I went and got a degree in photography and ran a successful photography studio. Then I come here and I was like lost and like everything started all over again. But coming now I'm around people who, I mean, I'm around millionaires and thousandaires and hundredaires. It doesn't matter, but it's not even about the money they make. It's how they achieve what they've wanted to achieve in life. And that's the one thing that when you find somebody, whether you're doing it solo, you are a product of the people you hang around. Oh, absolutely. You, you know, they said the five closest, but just the people. So when you recognize that and everybody's on the same page in one direction, 
then no matter how many plates you're spinning, you have a support group, you provide supports, mm -hmm. you can do whatever it is. So having a business, like, like you said, such as yours and with your relationship, you know about roadblocks and relationships. So you can kind of learn from those mistakes from the past and have a smoother go. Mm -hmm. We just had some things go on where we changed a couple people flying the plane. Mm -hmm. It's no problem. You jump in the pilot seat until you find your next co-pilot and you keep on moving. I, I think one thing everybody I want everybody to take from this is that the dopest thing about all this to me is the journey. Mm -hmm. The journey is something that um, you, you, experiences and, and things like when we look back on today, four years from now, we laugh about it, we joke about it. If it was something that was horrible, but now we're successful, that's what the journey is. Mm -hmm. And you have to appreciate it. So, Ryan, James. Wow. I, I had to do he it. I had to do, do it. it. Uh, Nito Brandito. <laughs> <laughs> so for those, just a, a little bit in closing, what is something for someone who is in their business, mm -hmm. and I know you've given a ton of information already, but something that someone that's in their business, growing their business, what is a concept that they can never forget day in, day out? What is your operating mindset and how you are successful in what you do? Well, I'd say I'm trying to be successful. Um, I think you, you, said expect, you said the word expectations earlier. Correct. Okay. So I'll touch on something real quick before I touch on that is uh, my other best friend that I've known, which you guys have met since I, since I was two, I've known him, right? Well, I started another construction company a couple years back and hired him as my PM, right? To run it all out in the field. Um, and I set expectations up from the very beginning. The first, when I, when I interviewed him, we sat down at Chamberlain's, had a good, you know, great steak, went and had a cigar. And I said, look, I said, I'm gonna set the expectations at this. When it's during work hours, this is how I operate. And if you're okay with that, then we can work together. And that's, that's coming from a, a boss to a best friend scenario. You don't necessarily say that to an employee that you're some random guy that you hire. And the reason why I bring that up is because to your point, your question, expectations. Set your own expectations for what you're gonna do that day and then what you're gonna do that month and what you're gonna do that year. Set your own expectations for yourself because you've got to hold yourself accountable just as much as you're holding everybody else accountable. That's, that would be what I would say. And have goals. Set, and set, your goals <clears throat> set your goals, write them down, put a timeline on it, and then that, gives, that's, that allows you to set the expectations for yourself and okay. then just do a it. book. Right. Yep, book. exactly. The Life Mastery book. It's, it's exactly what you're saying. It's just, a, what is it? It's... A goal without a deadline is a dream. Yeah, it's a dream. Yeah, yeah. And it's that's just, it's just like talk, 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 talk. Instead of instead of doing it, shut up and go do something. Right. You mm -hmm. just yeah. You you just gave me the quote for this uh, for your little placard card that goes on YouTube. By the way, so I just witnessed that. Oh. Yep. What you just said is now going to be cool. I may even make a T-shirt. Shut up and do something. Make a make a damn bumper sticker. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Do they even do bumper stickers? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all, it's all window stickers now. Uh, oh, we should go to do a bumper sticker. But if someone wants to learn more mm -hmm. about you, and about your company, mm -hmm. where do they go? They go to www.feelsecure, with no E, dot com. Pick it up. H1O. H1O Concentrate. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff you drink in the morning. And at night, if you want to have some fun dreams. <laughs> <laughs> And oh boy, the gel true. is for everything. 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 Just put it on and enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Take it as you want it. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. That's my pleasure. It was awesome. Thanks, guys. I mean, I appreciate, appreciate being on here. Yeah, yeah, if we weren't going to ride and we weren't going to the gym, I would have an actual drink we could cheers to. But yeah, you have water today. No, it's way, so, too, way too early for a drink. Adios, suckers. Adios, suckers.